Well, today on Nation, the Window Cleaners podcast, we're talking all about customer complaints. Yes, you get customer complaints no matter what business you're in, especially in the service industry. So if you've been in business a long time or even just a short while, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? How's it going? Have a look around. If it's your first time here, welcome. I hope you dig the podcast. Lots of content, three years of content, blah, blah, blah. Same speech every time. Go back, watch it. Hopefully, it's better than a cat video. But if you are one of the cool kids, if you are uh, somebody who watches every episode, you give it the thumbs up on YouTube, and most importantly, you order your supplies through me, uh, shameless plug, it's because of you that I get name brand bubble gum. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. If you want to be one of the cool kids, uh, order through me. Uh, my number is 862-312-2026. I would love nothing more than to be your rep putting orders in. Just shoot me a text. Be like, yo, it's in my cart. Put it in. At the end of the episode, I'm going to give you a code for 5% off and free shipping. So get uh, keep that in mind. Either way, um, if you haven't watched the show before, or, or if you're new in the industry, uh, we do talk about a lot of different content. Today is no different, and I know with this um, kind of content, people are always arguing, "Well, we don't get complaints. We don't. People don't. They they just don't complain about our work, and that's great." If you have nothing but good reviews, you are bound for a bad one. And the reason is, is that people, sometimes they just can't be happy. There are people like that who, um, they just aren't happy. And a lot of times it comes back and comes down to them just not knowing what they're getting for their money. So there's a lot of ways you can kind of be proactive, making sure you're not getting bad reviews, making sure that everything is positive from here on out, or at least to the best of your knowledge, again, there are just going to be people who are not happy ever, ever. I had somebody one time, well, I got to their job, we cleaned all their windows, and uh, one of the back windows was cracked. The pane of glass was cracked on the uh, storm. She pointed it out to us first when we first got there. Oh, great. Okay, well, we're just not going to clean that pane. Uh, we're going to clean around it. Great. We get there, the whole thing. Uh, do the job. We're going back through, and she's like, um, "The window is broken. The the window's broken." I said, "Yeah, that we just we didn't clean it. If it's broken, we don't want to clean it." She goes, "But I thought you'd have it fixed." I said, "You thought that we would have the." So she thought by us cleaning the windows when we left, we would somehow fix the pane of glass. Even though not once ever did we talk about fixing, and we have a glass guy, we could have had it fixed. She never brought it up or anything. She just somehow assumed that we would fix it. I don't know. It was the most confusing thing ever. It was a first time and only time client. And uh, I was super, super confused. If you've got an awesome story about a customer complaint or a customer just being crazy, post it if you're watching this on YouTube or go to YouTube and search WCR Nation and look for this episode. Um, there are so many amazing complaints that make no sense. And here's something, just to kind of go off on a little tangent. If you have 500 reviews and they're all one, uh, all five star reviews, that's cool. But like in my brain, I want to see negative because I go off of negative. If I look at Amazon and there's uh, you know, whatever, I don't click the five star reviews. I don't want to hear people go, it's great. I love it. It's good. That's the assumption, right? I'm going to go in and look at that, f that one star review that says directions were hard or, um, you're missing screws or box was damaged by FedEx. If you see a whole bunch of negative reviews and it's all that kind of dumb stuff, you go, wow, this is a good product. Nobody's got real complaints. It's the same kind of concept in your window cleaning business. If your complaint is, you know, uh, John left my house and they didn't do a follow up call to see if I was happy, or, um, you know, when they got to my house, they were 15 minutes late and, uh, you know, had water on my sill or something like that. We were looking at like, okay, but that's all like simple, simple stuff. Or they missed a spot. Or when I called, it went to voicemail or one of those things. There's a lot you can learn from a complaint. If a complaint is not real, 
like I said, some people just give complaints regardless. And if it's not a real complaint, you know that it shouldn't even count against the company. So don't be sad if you get a negative review. It's not the end of the world. It actually can help you with uh, kind of, you know, justifying the good reviews. I know that sounds weird, but just hear me out. A big thing that uh, people complain about, it's, it's they don't need perfection. They just need to feel like they got what they paid for, right? If you think about what we do, we provide an experience as of anything. Because remember, if they hire me, you or the guy down the street, they're going to have clean windows. We talk about this all the time. Um, and I know a lot of you understand this. Some of you may still not quite get it. But here's the drift. The, the, the idea is, is that when somebody hires you for a certain service the service performed is a guarantee. Like if you get somebody to come and cut your grass, nobody can tell you they are going to cut the grass lower than, the, like that's not the thing. Everybody, you're cutting the grass, is that's what it is. They're going to get the grass cut. It's the same thing with clean windows. They know with clean windows, house washing, roof cleaving, whatever, it's going to leave a clean whatever surface. There are people who will dive in and nitpick things. And it's not that they need necessarily to know that nitpicky, it's the perfect. It's because for some reason they don't feel like they got what they paid for. If you feel ever that you didn't get a good deal afterwards, oh man, I paid way too much. I, I'm going to take the pen and you do things to, to make it make sense to you. That's what a lot of people do. And if you're getting complaints uh, from people it sometimes is they don't feel like they got what they paid for. So make the experience matter. Make the experience amazing for them. Because if the experience is good, then they have no reason to complain. They have no reason to ex complain. If you think you got, if you get a brand new Ferrari for $1,000, there is not anything you're going to do to complain on them. Now, if you got a Ferrari and it doesn't work, then you're going to complain because you didn't get your thousand dollars worth of Ferrari, right? And I think even one that doesn't work is probably still worth a thousand dollars. Dumb analogy, it doesn't matter, right? So they need to make sure that they get their money's worth. If they get their money's worth, they're happy. So why do people complain then? Just in general, if you're late to an appointment, maybe you didn't value their time. That's what they assumed is, oh, this guy came in late, he didn't value my time, right? What do you do for that? If you're going to run late and you know your appointment's coming up, maybe you give them a call or you have the office call and say, hey, Mrs. Jones just wanted to give you a call. This is Jersey from XYZ Window Cleaning. I just wanted to give you a heads up. We're going to be running a little bit late and I wanted to let you know. Um, I know you got a lot going on in your day and I wanted to make sure that you know what's going on, right? Now that person, even if they got something else going on, you called them and told them in the beginning. You let them know you're valuing their time. They feel like you're valuing their time, right? If somebody says, um, you know, uh, so-and-so was rude and, uh, you know, they were, were not nice and any wins, I would rather deal with somebody else. Well, where was the experience, right? Were you short or tired? Were you not pleasant? Were you not over the top nice? If you weren't, they can remember that. Maybe they were the ones that were in a bad mood that day and everything around them just felt negative and you talked to them, but you were short because you were busy and tired. It's 110 degrees with the heat index and you're out there and you're like, oh, hey, Mrs. Jones, yeah, we're here. We're going to get everything done. Ugh, these people can't even give me the time, right? So what the person's complaining about is a learning experience for you. You understand what they're complaining about, not the actual fact. It's just like sales. Some of us, or all of us, I should say, are in sales in some degree, right? A big thing with sales is when you're selling a window cleaning job, you go to a storefront, a route job, a mom, pa, house, anything, and you say, hey, I'd love to get you these services. What do you think? And they say, oh, well, yeah, you know, the last guy, uh, he just never showed up. I don't even know where he is. Sometimes he'd be here. It'd be like four weeks before he came. He's on a weekly schedule. I have no idea what's going on. And you go, yeah, yeah. And we're the cheapest around. That person's like, what? Okay. They don't care about that. They didn't tell you about that. What they told you about their complaint was that the other guy didn't show up. Is that the other guy was never there. He didn't come on time. 
So your whole selling point from there on out is about how you're going to always be there on time. You guarantee it. You'll be there every day, even if it's rain or shine, right? We give you our cell phone number, so if there's ever an emergency service and you get egged or something happens, we will be there, right? They're looking for reliability. They said it without even saying it. Their complaint was actually telling you what they didn't like. If you can read a complaint or read what somebody says, you can sell them on that. That's what they want, their pain point. That's what they want to be answered. So have two ears and one mouth. That's really, really very valuable in the complaint department, especially when you're reading what somebody said or what they say about the last guy. Because here's the other thing is that a lot of us get accounts, all of us, at some point get somebody new and always say, oh, have you ever had your windows professionally cleaned before? Oh, yeah, yeah, we had them about two years. Oh, how'd they do? Always ask that. Because guess what? What they're going to say is what they remember. They're like, oh, they did perfect. Well, their price was good. Everything was good. Yeah, their price was good. They did perfect. They did. It was amazing. We had them for 10 years. Oh, yeah. Oh, what what happened to them? Oh, they moved, right? Then there was no complaint. I get it. They moved or they closed or whatever. Well, we want to be your next company that we're here for 10 years. If you mentioned to me that you've had the last window cleaner for 10 years, I hope that we can, you know, exceed your expectations. You'll love us and hopefully we'll be your window cleaner for the next 10, 20 years, right? You're reading and playing off of that. They're not going to be a complaint on that side of it because they're happy with what they had in the last one. But if you call someone, ah, oh, last guy did it for 50 bucks. Can you drop the price? No, unfortunately I can't. Uh, we do uh, uh, bid on our lowest price right away uh, with insurance and uh, everything else that we have. Unfortunately, we're not always the lowest, but we will give you the best service. Here's why, blah, blah, blah. If she says, oh, the last guy did it for 50 bucks. I said, oh, did is he was he not able to do it this year was it just too busy or no no he you know he he wasn't here or he did it for fifty dollars but you know last time he just didn't do the sills it just it was a mess the guy came in he smelled like cigarettes but they're telling me all the things they didn't like oh i totally understand that well we can certainly do the sills in that you know if your sills are included in the price that's why it's higher we do the sills we make sure that every window is wiped down before we walk out. We don't ever want to leave a mess in your house. I'm sorry you had a bad experience with them, but I would love to change your mind on window cleaners and uh, hopefully you have a great experience with us, right? That's how you go on the opposite side of that. A big thing with people is, is that they need to have expectations. They need to know what you are going to do. This is a big thing. If you've ever seen the bidding with uh, three packages or any of that stuff, that takes care of that because they're telling you what they want done. Sometimes you get to a job and people assume, this is like 12 years ago, that you're going to replace a window. It's still mind-boggling me. This lady just, I, I really just don't know why, why she would just assume that. Anyway, see, I repressed the memory and now it's back and now I'm just still thinking about it. Why did she do that? Anyway, <clears throat> okay. Anyway. If somebody thinks you're going to do the sills and the frames and you're going to do the screens and you're going to also, you know, do all that, why do they think that? It's because you didn't talk about what's going to get done. Some people sometimes are like, hey, you know what? I just like to do outside windows. I get there, do my work and leave. And if they say something, I let them know I only do outsides. Don't do that. And here's why. If you do it, sometimes people are not even embarrassed, but they're, they're, they're tight on what they do do or what they do offer because they feel like uh, they're not able to give sometimes as much as, as they should or something. Always let them know. Here is where the three products or where you can explain expectations right out of the get-go. If we get to a job and I see a broken window like that lady, I don't ever even say because she's ludicrous that we're not going to replace the window, obviously. But what I do say is, hey, just so you know, when I walked around your house, I saw that there was a cracked frame on the back window. I know you're probably already aware of it. Looks like a lawnmower strike or something like that. Just so you know, just so we don't damage it or put water in there or force it where it shouldn't go, we're not going to clean that window pane just for liability reasons. Uh, obviously, you're going to be replacing that pane at some point anyway, but I wanted to let you know. The whole thing is done before the job. The lady goes, oh, yeah, no, my husband saw that, hit it, rock kicked up, broke the window. We're going to fix it in a couple of weeks. We just haven't gotten to it. We haven't even remembered it was there. Oh, no, absolutely. Uh, if you if you need a good glass guy, I got a guy. Let me say that. I got a guy, right? But here's what that does. 
is when you're all said and done, A, if she forgot about it really, she thinks you broke it, all of a sudden now she's mad at you for uh, breaking her window, right? Almost got me. Almost got me. Uh, if you let her know that you're not going to clean it, when she sees that it's still dirty, she's not going to call you and go, hey, you missed a window, right? Because you told her what is happening. It's the same thing with packages. Here's how we lay them out. My basic package is exterior only. That's it. That is the lowest package you can get with us in a home is exterior only on window cleaning. Now, the next package up would be inside and outside, track sills, frames, and screens for X amount. The next package above that, and you could tailor these all. Again, I sometimes put house washing and whatever. The next package above that is inside, outside, track, sills, frames, screens, house wash, roof cleaning, gutter cleaning, and gutter face whitening with any concrete or whatever. You put absolutely everything. So here's what that does. Now it goes to them and they get to choose. Now if they pick option two, which 90%, well, 83% of people pick, now they know, well, I'm going for this option. It comes with a lot, but it doesn't come with a house wash or roof clean or any of that fun stuff. So when you get done, they're the ones that picked it. They knew it was an option, but they still picked what they picked. No one will ever complain that you didn't do enough if they knew what you're doing in the first place, right? It's when you buy a car, you go through everything and they go, okay, just so you know, the first two years of this three-year lease, you're going to get all of the oil changes and everything done blah, blah, blah. That's all on there. Now, if you want that extra third year uh, done or for the life of the vehicle oil changes, it's going to cost you this much. What happens is after that two years, you're probably not going to remember because it's been so long, but the concept is, is that that third one, they go, okay, that'll be $69. And you're like, oh, I never, I never paid before. I know your uh, two years is up. Uh, you did have the option when you bought the car to extend it, but it looks like you had declined that and wanted to pay it on your own. Like, ah, oh yeah, that guy told me, right? Now you can't be mad that you're paying for it because you were told about it, right? So just help them with their exp their expectations. Help them understand what they're getting and they can't be upset at what they think they were going to get. Sometimes people think you're getting everything. If you're just doing exterior window cleaning and the lady goes, ah, all the insides of my windows are dirty or I have storms. You just did the outside of the window. I thought you were going to do the outside of the outside pane and the outside of the inside pane. Nope. I explain it very, very well. No one can have that option. So just having them understand and getting the expectations, they feel like they're getting what they they got, what they said they were going to get, they got what they thought they were going to get, and they get what they paid for. So give them expectations and uh, basically help them understand. And offer them every price you have. If you're going to spend $3,000 today, I have everything. I'm going to do roof clean, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to give them everything. First off, they know. Second off, I say, if you don't want a package and you need to add any of those services, you can let me know. We can all cart that too. But then you start with a package, all cart certain services. It's just a clever way to kind of put it out there. But then people also don't, they don't assume they're getting something they're not. Gutter cleaning is a perfect example. If you got the tiger stripes on the outside with the oxidation, if you're cleaning a gutter, well, technically, are you cleaning the stripes off the gutter? Are you cleaning the face of the gutter? No, here's what we do. We scoop, bag, and remove all the debris. And we flush your downspouts with a hose. I just told you everything we're going to do, right? So just make sure that they are aware. Their expectations are, are right. Another thing after the fact, when everything's said and done, I always, always, always walk with the customer. We call it the um, uh, walk-arounds, but... Not everybody does it, but we always go, okay, Mrs. Jones, we're all done. Uh, our tech, Ben, here is finishing packing up. While he's packing up, I'd like to take you around, just show you anything. All of you think look great, and I start to walk around, and sometimes they're like, oh, that's fine. It looks great. Most times, they don't even need to walk around, but the option was there to walk around. I'm not hiding anything if I'm going to walk you around. I'll, sometimes people do want to walk around, and I'll walk everything around, and you know what? I don't ever get callbacks from people who walk around with me because they've walked around, they've looked at it while it was on site, and if they didn't see anything, it wasn't there. I've had people before say, oh, you know what, after we did that walk around, you guys left, the closet window was forgot, so we just got it the next time. But in their brain, it's like, hey, I should have said something then. I didn't, right? And that's how you don't get complaints, is doing that walk around, that little extra to let that experience be that much more amazing. That 100% satisfaction guarantee for us is after we walk around and go, Okay, great. Well, obviously, if you find anything, spot spe spots, streaks, or smears, let me know. But uh, are you 100% satisfied for today's work? And I 
have him sign the sheet. I go, yes, absolutely. You guys were wonderful. Great. If you want, you can put any comments down below. Any of the survey. When you're done, just fold that survey up. Put it back in the envelope, and I won't have to even read it. It just goes right to our boss. Little things like that allow them to give feedback. It allows them to get compliments. It allows them to all that stuff. Uh, we did a promo, by the way, jumping off a little bit. One time that uh, with those surveys, if anybody mentioned a name in the survey, the person got, I think it was five bucks or something. Uh, so it'd be like, oh, you know, Gary did such a great job. You know, Gary and Ben worked together, but Gary was the one that got Gary, right? So it just means that you were personable and somebody to remember. Remember, front face, great experience. They love the company because of the experience. Um, so what to do? Again, always, always listen to what they're saying, right? Respect them as uh, your boss. There's a big, big thing sometimes is that after a long day, you're short, you're not, you know, maybe they are a little bit picky. Maybe they're not your favorite customer. You're learning that they're having a bad day. The quickest thing to derail anything when they're already being mad is like, you can't talk to me like that, right? And I'm not saying take a butt whooping. I'm not saying that, right? If they're extremely disrespectful, Hey, you know what? I, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't think this is going to work. I do apologize. We're not charging for any service and I leave, right? But you got to be respectful. You have to respect that they're your boss. I know we didn't do this for that. And I know none of us are in business to have bosses. I get it. But understand that dynamic is there. And I always have a dynamic. If you're in the South, Mr. and Mrs. Always, always, right? Always there. Always respectful. Always give your distance, be super polite, nice and animated. Let people understand, see your happiness inside. It really does translate to them. Kindness, be kind. Be kind to their animals. Most people's animals are just like their babies. If they see you kind of just, you know, push the cat away with your foot because it's trying to rub on you or something, ah, I'm not a cat guy. Well, guess what? You just kick their baby. They don't like you, right? These little things are how we don't get these complaints. Um, suck it up. Sometimes we just have to suck it up and, uh, you know, take a little bit of a lashing. Make sure people are there. Be positive. Hopefully we can brighten their day. Um, and there's another thing. If somebody um, ever, ever really just complains to complain, I've had people who have written the worst review, uh, again, earlier on, I've had people who claimed I was racist because uh, our price was up when we went to the job site and they had more windows. It's I've seen it all. Sometimes you have to fire a customer. Just don't go back to them. If they're leaving you crap reviews, don't go back to them. There's just some people that are not happy either. No matter how great of a job you do, they're just not a happy person. And I'm going to give you a little life, I don't want to say life lesson. Because that just sounds dumb. But here's something. Put it in your in your brain and let it just roll around. But we're all like garbage trucks. Now hear me out. All day long, you're picking up other people's garbage, right? I went to the gym this morning and this dude took my spot. And then when I walked in, right, I dropped my bottle. I got water all over my shoe. And I had a wet shoe. And I'm walking around, I got one up to Lowe's, and uh, the, the uh, lane closed right in front, right? All day, these little things are piling up, piling up, and piling up, and guess what? At some point, humans, people, you, me, everybody, all your customers, at some point, all of that garbage has to dump out, right? You're picking up little things all day long, eventually it's full, and it gets dumped out. And sometimes you're the the dump. Sometimes you're where it gets dumped off on. So being positive, you know, does not mean that you've lost any type of credentials or personal satisfaction or you can't talk to me like that. I'm not just a window. None of that. Sometimes you're the person that gets dumped on. So it's up to you. Take the garbage. Try to um, you know, soften it. Sometimes you just can't. And I, every time I, I fire a customer in person, I say the exact same thing. I say, I'm sorry, Mrs. Jones. It's just not going to work out between us. Uh, I know you had a lot of options to choose from. I appreciate you giving us a chance, but we're going to go our separate ways now. We're not charging anything for the service today. Uh, I do appreciate it. And sorry if we've wasted any of your time. 
you can't be mad at that. At that point, you're still usually getting screamed at or whatever. You're exiting slowly. Now, I didn't charge him. People go, you yeah, charge him. You did the work. You did it. If you charge somebody who's not happy, A, if you have 100% satisfaction guarantee, it goes against that. But B, guess who's really not going to be happy when they're stewing inside their house and they go, you know what? Those jerks still charge me for this. I'm not. Just, you know what? It's just not going to work out between us. I do apologize if we're wasting any of your time. I'm so sorry. And I'm sincere about it. And then we leave. And I don't, but one time that I can remember, I've ever gotten a bad review from somebody who was that upset. If we just left and went out and it was this, that was the thing, it just was. I've been in other houses where we've broken windows and people are like, oh no, no, it happens, I imagine. Uh, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to get it taken care of. We should have this back in 24 to 48 hours. No, no problem. Just give me a call. We'll see when I'm around. Right? And then there's other people you think you do everything right and they're just not happy. It's got to have kindness. You got to have respect. You got to suck it up and give expectations. Like I said, if you offer everything at a price, they know that what they're getting and what they're not getting. Now, uh, by the way, there's a good class uh, by Dougie Deuce, same thing in packaging. Bobby Walker talks packaging. Responsive Big Kurt uh, talks packaging. If you're not packaging your stuff, do it. Three packages. That's all you want. Don't overwhelm them. Yes, I know sometimes at WCR we overwhelm you guys, but Chris doesn't get the package thing. Um, but yeah, three packages. Absolute basic, absolute everything package you want people to take in the middle. Packaging everything like that lets them know, setting their expectations lets them know, and explaining what gets done lets them know. If they know, they can't be unhappy. Man, there you go. But by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, or if you're listening to this on a podcast, which most of our views, listens, whatever, are on a podcast, so what's up? What's that? But go to YouTube. Tell me uh, what kind of uh, crappy uh, complaint you got on your company. Uh, and I always... I, I know I feel sad for some people. Somebody had just uh, was hitting their like 300th review and number 300, I think it was, was a bad review. And they're like, no, hey, it builds credibility, right? You can't please everybody all the time. But there you are. I definitely, definitely appreciate it. If you're still listening, I'm giving you a code for uh, 5% off. My number is 862 312 2026. Um, today is, uh, the code is complaint. If you tell me the code complaint, uh, then, um, that gets you 5% off. So please do. I really appreciate you guys ordering to me. It means a lot. Uh, there's some of you OGs and some of you cool kids that just uh, order everything through me. And I super, super appreciate it. I can't tell you enough. Uh, but yeah, order through me. 862-312-2026. If you got anything, my email is jersey at windowcleaner.com uh, send me something send me pictures send me whatever definitely appreciate it it's like the way to get uh, mail nowadays so definitely go and do that but either way until next week go out there and be epic